Right here you made a mistake, Ivan. As for the matter that the Gospel says, it never really happened. You had one job, and you wrote that poem for a short time. But we were unhappy with the poem at all. You described Jesus as if he really existed, but although not an attractive character. Jesus never existed in the world, and I'm going to prove that to you. Narzan, please. We have no Narzan. What about beer? We will have beer delivered just by the evening. Okay, what have we got right now? Apricot drink. Okay, okay. 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 Two glasses, please. <laughs> wow, shit. <coughs> you know, Ivan, I now almost had a sunstroke. <coughs> I would say it was some kind of hallucination. I'm over it. It's just high time to give it up and go to Kislovodsk. Okay, let's go on. I want to point you to ancient historians, for example, Halo Alexandria, brilliantly educated Joseph Flaria. They never mentioned the existence of Jesus, but the part in the 15th book of chapter 44 of the famous Tacitic Analysis, where it says about execution of Jesus, it's nothing else as a fake insert. There is no Eastern religion in which, as a rule, a virginal young maid gave birth to God, and the Christians, having no new idea, also created their Jesus in the same way, but he didn't exist in the real world. Let's sit down. This is our main foundation. I also want to point you to ancient Egyptian Osiris. Gracias God of Earth and Heavens. Pay your attention to Famous and Marduk, or less known terrible god Vizili Puzili, that was admired by the Aztecs. German. Englishman. Just look, he doesn't feel hot wearing gloves. You, Ivan, esoterically describe the birth of God's son Jesus. But the fact is that many sons of God had been born before Jesus. But I want to assure you that no one of them existed before, including Jesus. And as for you, you shouldn't describe the birth of Jesus as a real fact. Vice versa. You should confirm that as a false information. But it turns out, according with the story, he really was born. <laughs> Excuse me. I've never met you before. But the subject of your conversation is so much of interest to me. Let me... Let me take a seat between you. You're welcome. <sighs> if I'm not mistaken, you denied the birth of Jesus. Yeah, that's just I said. You agree with your company without any doubts. It is amazing. Excuse my curiosity, but I'm sure you don't believe in God. I swear I will not tell anyone. Yes, we don't believe in God. And we can say that completely freely. Let me shake your hand. Why did he shake his hand? 
for very important information. That is too interesting to me as a traveler. But, let me ask you. What can you tell me about confirmations of the existence of God? As far as I know, there are exactly five of them. None of these confirmations mostly cause nothing. You should agree. If you think hard, you will not find any confirmations of the existence of God. And that is an indisputable fact. Bravo! Bravo! You fully repeated the thought of the restless old man Emmanuel. But there is a curiosity. He completely destroyed all five confirmations. But then, as if in mockery of himself, created the sixth proof. But the proof of Emmanuel is not convincing either. As for me, I would put him in dungeon for about three years. Ivan. That's right. That's right. That place just for him. I did tell him at breakfast then. You, professor, came up with something awkward. Maybe it is reasonable. But not clear. People will make fun of you. With Emmanuel at breakfast? But I'm sure. But it is not possible to put him in a dungeon. Because he's in a much more distant place than dungeon for over a hundred years. And he has no chance to break out. It serves him right. I agree with you. But there is a question bothering me. If you don't believe in God, who as you think controls human life? People control themselves. I beg your pardon. In order to control your life, you must at least have an exact plan for more or less long time. Let's assume at least for a hundred years. Let me ask you, how can people control something if they cannot foresee their own tomorrow's day? Really, just imagine, you start controlling your life, as they say, enjoy every minute of your life, and bang, <laughs> lung sarcoma. Yeah, sarcoma. And here your control is over. You are no longer interested in somebody's destiny, except your own one. Your relatives begin to hide the truth from you. Be in despair, you rush to your doctors, then to some charlatans, and even to some fortune tellers. All these actions are useless, you should understand it yourself, nothing of that can help you. In the end, all that ends tragically. The one who recently believed that he could control something finds himself lying motionless in a wooden box, and his close people and his family, realizing that he is good for nothing, just burn down his body in crematorium. But it happens even worse. A man is going to sanatorium in Kislovodsk. It would seem just a trifle. But he cannot manage with it too. Because it is unknown why. Suddenly slips and finds himself under a tram. Will you really say? He could do it on purpose. Isn't it right to think he is controlled by someone else? Mm, but... You want to smoke, as I see. What cigarettes do you prefer? You want to say you have various? I said, what do you prefer? Okay, our brand. Our brand. Oh shit! Yes. Yes, human being is mortal. It's hard to challenge. But the point is that... Yes, human being is mortal. But it's half trouble. The total trouble. When human being is suddenly mortal. That is the real problem. And he cannot say at all what he is going to do tonight. I think 
This is an exaggeration. This evening, more or less, is clear to me. Of course, if I don't catch a brick on my head. A brick? Would never fall on your head for no reason. In particular, it doesn't threaten you anyway. Believe me, you will have different death. Maybe you can say exactly? Why not? One, two. Mercury in the second house. The moon has gone away. 6 p.m. At 7 misfortune. You will be decapitated. <coughs> By whom? Enemies? Interventionists? No. By Russian woman. Come, some all. <laughs> this is... Unlikely to be. I'm sorry, but that is sure to happen. By the way, what are you going to do tonight, if it is not a secret? It is not a secret. Now I will go home along Sadoa Street. But at 10 o'clock p.m. in Masaliti, in Moscow Association of Writers, where I have an honor of being a writer, there will be a meeting at 10 o'clock, and I will give my speech there. No, no, no. I'm sure. It is impossible. Tell me why. Because Anushka has already bought some flower oil. And not just bought it, but even spilled it. It comes out. The meeting will not take place. Excuse me, why exactly sunflower oil? And who is Anushka? It seems to me I know the reason. Sir. Have you ever been a psychiatric patient? Yes, I have. And more than once. I was everywhere in the world. I regret. I didn't ask the professor. What is schizophrenia? So, you will ask him yourself. Ivan Nikolaevich. How do you know my name? My pardon, Ivan Nikolaevich. Who doesn't know the famous poet Ivan Bezdomny? Please. You just sit here a minute. I have something to tell my friend. Oh, with pleasure. It's so good here under the lime trees. By the way, I am not in a hurry anywhere. That's what will do, Misha. He's not a tourist. He's a spy. He's a Russian immigrant who moved here. Let's check up his documents while he's here. Are you sure? Believe me, he just pretends to be a fool one to get information from us. Did you hear him speak in Russian? Let's not let him go away. I beg your pardon. In the heat of our argument, I forgot to introduce myself. This is my business card. Passport. An invitation to Moscow to give my consultation. It turns out, you are invited as a consultant. Yes, I am. Are you German? Me? Yeah, perhaps I'm German. Excuse me, what is your speciality? I am a specialist in black magic. Hmm, <laughs> not bad. You are invited to Moscow on this speciality? Yeah, the point is that they found in a state library the original manuscripts of warlock Herbert Avrilaksky of the 10th century. And they want me to investigate them. I'm the only specialist in the world. You are a historian? Yeah, I'm a historian. Today on the Patriarchs, there will be an interesting story. Keep in mind, Jesus existed. You know, Professor, we have a different point of view on that matter. There is no need point of view. 
He just existed. And no more else. But we need some confirmations. There is no need of confirmations. Everything is simple. In a white cloak. With the blood leaning. With the shuffling cavalry gait. Early in the morning of the 14th of the spring month of Nissan. Between the two wings of the palace of Herod the Great. The procurator of the Jews. Pontius Pilate came out. Defendant from gallery. Yes. Did you send the case to the Tetrarch? Yes, Procurator. What did he say? He refused to give his conclusion on the case. He sent the sentence of death for you to confirm it. Bring the defendant. You incited the people to ruin the temple of Jerusalem. Good man, believe me. I see you call me a good man. Can't you Ratman to me? This defendant called me a good man. Get him out of here for a moment and teach him how to answer my questions. But don't cripple him. You must call the Roman procurator, Yigemon. Don't say unnecessary words. Stand quietly. You understand me, or I will lash you. I understand you. Don't beat me. Name. Mine? Mine I know. Yeshua. Have you a nickname? Ganodzri. Where are you from? I am from Kamala. What is your bloodline? I don't know for sure. I don't remember my parents. I was told my father was Syrian. Tell me your permanent residence. I have no residence. I travel from town to town. I can say that shorter. Vagrant. Have you got any relatives? No, I am alone in the world. Can you speak any other languages besides Aramaic? Yes, Greek. Why did you decide the people to ruin the temple of Jerusalem? I could... Aegemon was never going to ruin the temple, and I didn't incite anyone to those meaningless actions. A lot of people come to Jerusalem for the holiday. Magicians, wizards. Also, you can find liars among them. For example, you are a liar. It says clear. 
you incited to ruin the temple of Yerushalayim. A lot of people testify that. Those kind people didn't listen to me and mixed everything up. Frankly speaking, I have a bad feeling this confusion will last for a long time. That's because he didn't write down my words correctly. Stop pretending to be a crazy one. This parchment says a lot for you to be hung up. Egemon, really a young man followed me with a gold parchment. He was writing every my word. But one day I looked at his parchment and was struck. I didn't find any of my words in it. I asked him to burn down his parchment. But he snatched the parchment out of my hands and ran away. His name? Levi Matvey. He was a tax collector. He initially disliked me. He even tried to insult me. I mean he thought he could insult me by calling me a dog. As for me, I don't see anything wrong to be offended by this word. But having heard me out, he at least calmed down. Then he threw his money on the road and said he would follow me and said it absolutely seriously. Tax collector, you hear? He threw his money on the road. Yes. He said he hated money since that moment and became one of my companions. Levi Matvey? Yes, Levi Matvey. Tell me, what did you tell about the temple in the bazaar crowd? I said the temple of the old faith will collapse and a new temple of verity will be created. And I said it clear for everyone to understand me. Why did you embarrass the people in the bazaar, telling them about Verity, about which you have no idea? What is Verity? First of all, Verity means you have a bad headache, and you have it so bad that you are ready to commit suicide. Not only you have no forces to speak to me, but you can hardly look at me. And now I am involuntarily your executioner, and it makes me sad. You cannot even think about anything. There is the only thing that you want. You want your dog to come, as it is the only being you are attached to. But your suffering will end now. You will get rid of your headache. <laughs> That's all. You are feeling well now. And I'm really happy for you. <laughs> Egemon, I suggest you should leave your palace for a while and take a walk somewhere around. I think at least in the gardens of Mount of Hollis. Thunderstorm will start by the evening. The walk would give you a great good and I would keep your company with pleasure. You know, Egemon, I have some new ideas that can be of interest to you, and I would gladly share them with you. I want to say, you make an impression of a very intelligent person. It seems to me you are too closed and lost faith to people at all. Agree, you cannot put all your affection in your dog. Your life is poor, Egemon. Make his friends free. How did you know I wanted to call my dog? It is not difficult. You were moving your hand through the air, as if you were going to call your dog. And your lips. Tell me the truth. You're a great doctor. No procurator. I'm not a doctor. Okay. If you want to keep it in secret, keep it. It has no direct relation to your case.
Well, can you confirm you didn't incite the people to ruin or maybe to set fire to the temple? Aegemon <sighs> didn't incite anyone to these disgusting actions. You think I look like a narrow minded? Oh no, you don't look like an narrow minded. You have to swear you say the truth. What do you want me to swear by? By your life at least. It's just in time for you now. Because your life is hanging by a thread. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you think, Egemon, you hung it. If it is, you are deeply mistaken. But I can cut this hair. You are mistaken again, Egemon. You should agree. The one can do it. Who hung it? Now I don't doubt that idle people followed you everywhere in Yerushalayim. I don't know who hung your tongue, but you are a reasonable person. By the way, is that true that you came to Yerushalayim on a donkey's back through the narrow gate? And all people were following and greeting you as some kind of prophet. <laughs> you know, I have never had a donkey, but you're right. I really came through the narrow gate, but on foot, and the only one who was my companion, Levi Matvei, and nobody greeted me, because no one knew me then in Yerushalayim. Don't you know by chance Gestas and Varavan? No. I don't know these kinds of people. Tell me, why every time you say the word kind people, you call everyone like this? Everyone. There are no evil people in the world. And you preach it? Yes. For example, Kenturion Mark, he got a nickname Ratman. You will say he's a good man too? Yes. <sighs> but he... He's a not happy man since the time when kind people had mutilated him. He became cruel and callous person. I'd like to know who could mutilate him. Kind people! They pounced on him like dogs on a bear. The Germans grabbed his neck, arms and legs. Infantry manipul got into encirclement. And if the cavalry turma had not gotten into the flank, I then commanded it. You wouldn't have a talk to him now. If I had a chance to have a talk with him, I'm sure he would change dramatically. This will not happen, fortunately. Believe me. Right. I investigated the case of Ishua, nicknamed Ganodri, and didn't find any elements of crimes. In view of this, the procurator does not approve the decision of the small Sanhedrin on the death penalty of Ganodri. But taking into consideration that Ganodri's insane utopian speeches can cause unrest in Yerushalayim, the procurator expels Yeshua from Yerushalayim and confirms him for imprisonment in Caesarea, the Stratoric in the Mediterranean. That is exactly where the residence of the procurator's location. Is that all about him? No, unfortunately. The law on insulting majesty allows the use of capital punishment for every day, including holidays. Children are also condemned under this law, together with defendants, and in some cases children of children. The relatives of executed are forbidden to mourn them. Listen to me, Ganozri. Have you ever talked anything about Caesar? It is easy and pleasant to tell the truth. It's not important for me to know if it's nice or not nice for you to tell the truth. You will have to say that. But saying that, weigh ever your word. If you don't want an inevitable and painful death. So, answer me. Do you know Judah of Kiriath? And what did you tell him exactly? Of course, if you told. There is how it was. 
the night before yesterday. I met a young man near the temple. He introduced himself as a Judas from Kiriath. He invited me to his house in the low town and treated me. Kind man! Yes, pretty good and curious man. He had the greatest interest to my thoughts. He gave me a cordial welcome. He lit the candles? Yes. He asked me to express my view of state power. He was of much interest by this question. And what did you say? Or you will say you don't remember what you said? And on others. I said that all kind of power is violence against people. And the time will come when there will be no power in the world. And all people will go into the world of truth and justice. No one will need any power in that world. Further! There was nothing further. Then some people broke in to tie me up and bring to the jail. There has never been and will never be greater and finer power for people than the power of the Imperator Diverius. And it is not for you, crazy one, to discuss it. Take the convoy out of the balcony. Leave me alone with the offender. This is a state affair. I see, Gimon, that some kind of trouble happened because of my having talked to that young man. I, Gimon, have a bad feeling. I think something bad can happen to him. And I feel sorry for him. I think there is another one whom you should feel sorry for. And this is not Judas of Kerath. So, Mark Ratzman. Cruel and convinced executioner. The people that I see beat you for your sermons. The robbers, Dismas and Gestas, who killed four soldiers. And finally dirty traitor Judas. All of them good people. Yes. And the word of truth will come? It will, Igimon. It will never! Come! Offender! 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 Yeshua Ganodzri. Do you believe in any gods? God is one. I believe in him. Then pray to him. Pray hard. However, that won't help. Hateful town. If they'd put a knife in you before a meeting with Judas of Kerath, it really would have been better. Why don't you let me go, Egemon? I see they want to kill me. Do you suppose, wretch, that the Roman procurator will let the man go who has said that you have said? You think I'm ready to take your place? I don't share your thoughts! And listen to me. If from this moment, when you say even one word, if you speak to anyone at all, I repeat to you, beware! Beware of me! Egemon! Silence! To me.
I confirm the death sentence passed on Yeshua Ganozri. Summon to the palace, head of the secret service, then the president of the Sanhedrin, and the head of the temple guard in Yerushalayim. It was around 10 o'clock in the morning. My dear Ivan Nikolaevich. Your story is extremely interesting, Professor, but it doesn't coincide at all with the Gospel stories. My pardon. You of all people should know that preciously nothing of that is written in the Gospels never actually took place. And if we start referring to the Gospels as a historical source... <laughs> That's right. But I'm afraid no one can confirm that what you've just told us actually took place either. Oh yes, there is one who can. The point is that I was personally present at that moment, but keep it in secret, incognito, as they say. And therefore, I beg you, not a word to anyone, total secrecy. Tss. How long have you been in Moscow? I just arrived in Moscow, this every minute. Incidentally, it's all possible. I'm sure it was. Pontius Pilate and the balcony and so forth. Did you come alone? Or with your wife? Alone? I am always alone. But where are your things, Professor? At the Metropole? Where are you staying? Me? Nowhere. How is that? Where are you going to live? In your apartment. I, I am so glad. But uh, you won't be comfortable at my place. Um, I have a bad neighbor, Comrade Lekhadev, but they have wonderful rooms at the Metropole. Good service and... Uh, and there is no devil either. And devil either? Ch -ch. Be silent. There is no devil at all. <laughs> well. Now that is positively interesting. No matter what one asks for, there isn't any. It turns out on your mind he doesn't exist. But, uh... Calm down, calm down, professor. You sit here for a little minute with Conrad Bisdomny. As for me, I'll just run to the corner to make a phone call. Then later, I will come back and take you wherever you like. I think you don't know the city. Well, do it if you want. But I beg you before you go. At least believe that devil exists. I no longer ask you for anything more. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Mikhail Alexandrovich, would you like me to have a telegram sent at once to your uncle in Kiev? Looking for a turnstile, mister? This way, please. Straight on, and you will get where you are going. How about a little pinpoint for my information to set up an ex-coin master? <laughs> 